She was in love with the First Amendment. She thought free speech was the cornerstone of democracy. She gave more ACLU speeches than the, the president of the ACLU did. <laughs> One of her passions was talking about you know, civil liberties in places where an ACLU card is as good as a, uh, you know, a Communist Party membership. A few years ago, we had a classic situation down in Texas. Um, the legislature had taken a fit of communism and voted to make Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a state holiday. As you can imagine, it upset the Klan. And um, of course, if you are a civil libertarian like myself, you naturally have to stand up for the right of these dim-witted nincompoops to uh, <laughs> spew whatever vicious drivel they want to because it's their goddamn right under the First Amendment. Wearing their little pointy hats on their little pointy heads. They were met by several thousand citizens of Austin lining the sidewalks both sides who mooned them as they marched. It made a real nice effect. It was kind of like a wave at a baseball stadium. You got to have fun while you're fighting for freedom. For one thing, you don't always win, and that might get to be all the fun you ever have. So that when we are confronted with the problems of freedom, as we always are, and every generation has to face them anew, it's not as though, you know, you get the American heritage and there it is, it's all yours, and you don't have to do anything about it for the rest of your life. Never has been a deal like that. It's never been one long, broad, smooth path of progress ever onward and upward toward greater liberty and justice for all. God damn, that road has been rocky and full of potholes, and sometimes it just takes a hairpin turn and we roll right back down the hill. I'm not against the press, but I am only against the fake news media or press. Fake. Fake. You're purposely putting out information that you know to be false, purposefully misleading the American people, something that happens regularly. You can't say, I'm not done. I'm sick and tired of you guys. The last time I did the same thing, you were the guardian. You just body slammed me and broke my glass. Get the hell out of here. We've always had attacks on the media. That's kind of just a part of American political life. But for the first time, we have a, a president, and increasingly a political party, that treats media, reporters, journalists as sort of an enemy of the country, not just something to critique, but something to defeat. We are perilously close to taking the most magnificent political legacy any people has ever received and pissing it away. And I will tell you right now, we have had two presidents in the last 20 years who treated the Constitution of the United States as though it were kitty litter. And it is of great concern to me that so many Americans don't seem to think that nibbling away at civil liberties is going to affect them. Of course it will. Democracy depends on the people doing the heavy lifting. I want to point out that there is an important reason to vote that not many people know about it is in the Constitution. If you don't vote, you can't bitch. That's in section 22. When Americans really get stirred up, when we stand up on our hind feet and really speak out, they listen to us. Don't forget that. In fact, I'll tell you a secret about politicians, they're scared to death of us. All right, y'all, use it.